Well, folks, we're all talking about Hurricane Milton, of course, and part of the reason why we're all talking about it is because uh, a big, big storm breaking some records for us. The fifth lowest pressure in an Atlantic hurricane ever recorded. Okay, so big deal. That was yesterday. And the other reason why we're talking about it is because there's really nothing else happening anywhere else, right? Pretty quiet weather for us here in the lower 48. So Hurricane Milton, big time storm. Here's looking at infrared satellite. You can make out the eye. It's getting that stadium effect. Okay, the eye kind of slopes down, okay, kind of like a bowl. And in the stronger storms, it's actually open in the middle. All right, but uh, everything is just getting sucked in. It's like a buzzsaw, basically. Here's your blades sticking out, and it is buzzsawing its way straight towards Florida. It was a Cat 5 yesterday. This morning, it's a Cat 4 storm. It'll keep weakening down. To, it'll stay a Cat 4 for a while, but by the time it makes landfall, expected to weaken to a Category 3 storm of 125 mile per hour winds, 10 to 15 foot storm surge, still a hurricane as it crosses over Florida and then eventually dissipates out over the ocean. It makes landfall tomorrow evening and tomorrow night across the west coast, the Gulf Coast of Florida. Areas impact will be Tampa down to Fort Myers. Big time problems in Fort Myers and in Tampa. Storm surge expected to be 10 to 15, if not more, feet across the Gulf Coast of Florida on that western coast, okay? Not the Panhandle Coast, but the western Gulf Coast of Florida. The yellows, how much rainfall? The yellows are over 10 inches of rain. Florida, again, very flat state, so even though the east coast not necessarily dealing with the hurricane part of it, really, there will be a lot of flooding concerns, pretty much area-wide across southern and central and even parts of northeastern Florida. All right, all the way up to Jacksonville. Could see some pretty intense flooding. Back here at home, the rain gauge check. 15 days since our last measurable rainfall, September 23rd, saw nearly an inch of rain in Springfield. The bad news, the outlook, no rain through mid-October. Long range forecast, okay? Like I said, no rain through October 16th, roughly. There's some hints of maybe an upper level storm system coming to end next week. That will give us a chance, not a guarantee, but a chance of rain October 17th, 18th, 19th, somewhere in there. The data has been hinting at that for a while now, but we're starting to get a little closer. It's still showing up, hoping that stays the case, but that is still a good 10 to 14 days away from now. Lake of the Ozarks this morning, a cool start, 50 degrees, right? 40s, 50s, out the door, a little chilly for you out there. Your day planner looks good, middle 70s for this afternoon, a little warmer than yesterday, and the summer air is going to keep on nosing in for the rest of this week. We're back to the 80s on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday into the weekend. Upper 70s today, middle 40s again tonight. A warmer day Wednesday, lower 80s, warmer still on Thursday. Yeah, so we're going to the fall field today. And then that's all, folks. Wrapping it up there. Back to summertime for Thursday, Friday through the weekend. Another cold front comes early next week, but uh, warm next couple of days. Yeah, sure does feel like summertime's not letting go of us yet, but at least good that we have some hope for some rain in the uh, distant future, albeit not a guarantee there, Tom. Thanks.